Now that we know how to make trees, let's talk about how to do things with them. We might want to evaluate trees that describe expressions, render hierarchical user interfaces held in trees, or even just print out the values in a tree. All of these are examples of tree traversal, which means iterating over tree nodes and doing something with them. Tree traversal is a good topic to help us understand trees better and practice writing recursive algorithms. When we iterate over arrays, vectors, or linked lists, we do a nice linear walk through a nice linear data structure and it takes nice linear time. We would like tree traversal to also be linear in the number of nodes. In a single traversal of a tree, we only want to visit each node once. However, it turns out that there are several different ways to do this. Starting from the root node, we can traverse child nodes in either a breadth first or a depth first fashion, and there are three depth first traversal orders pre order, in order, and post order depth first traversal. Let's talk about each of these strategies in turn. First of all, we can traverse a tree in level order, also known as breadth first. In this traversal strategy, we perform an action on all of a node's children before performing that action on their children. This action can be anything from printing a value to some heavy duty computation, and it depends on the type of value we're storing in the tree. We'll talk about one specific example, printing out nodes in a programming language's abstract syntax tree, later in this video. We refer to performing an action on a node as visiting the node. Note that we don't have to visit a node and its children at the same time. In a level order traversal, we visit a node and enqueue its children for later visitation, after we're done with the current level. The other broad category of tree traversal is the depth first traversal. This category of traversal is amenable to recursion since it's concerned with processing subtrees. We can do depth first traversal with a pre order, in order, or post order algorithm. In a pre-order traversal, we visit a node before visiting its children. This leads to nodes being traversed in a fairly intuitive order, one that lends itself to printing information about nodes from top to bottom, or to setting up resources required by child nodes, such as buffers to render UI components into. In a post-order traversal, we visit a node's children before visiting the node itself. This allows child nodes to have input into the visitation of the parent node. For example, in order to tell how much space is being used by a directory on your hard drive, software must first look at everything inside of that directory and determine how much space it is using. That process can carry on recursively until we are ready to summarize an entire subtree. In order traversal only really makes sense for trees that have a more regular structure than we've imposed so far. We'll come back to in order traversal when we talk about binary trees. One super practical example of tree traversal is printing out source code. When source code written in a language like C++ is compiled into machine code, one of the first steps the compiler has to take is to convert the source text into a tree that represents the structure of the program. This tree is called an abstract syntax tree, or AST, and modern compilers give us tools for inspecting the AST directly. In this example, we'll look at one of the simplest possible C programs that does something. We don't include any header files because they would make the AST much more complicated. Instead, we just have a couple of numerical functions, main and foo. We can compile this to an object file with the C option, or we can just run some syntax checks with F syntax only. With the Clang compiler, we can also pretty print the AST that the compiler has parsed using the AST print option. Note that this printed AST doesn't include comments or white space from the original source code. This is a representation of just the compiler meaningful information stored in the AST. This is even clearer if we use Clang's AST dump option, which shows us the explicit tree structure of the parsed program. For example, the main function has one child, a compound statement, that has two statements in it. One is a variable declaration decal statement, and the other is a return statement. Each of these statements has child AST nodes that describe the variable, how it's initialized, what value to return, etc. The foo declaration has three parameters, so the foo function has three parmvar decal children, plus a compound statement representing the body of the function. This explicit tree representation is exactly how a compiler represents source code, in memory, after it's been parsed. So that's tree traversal. We've discussed breadth first and depth first approaches, including pre order and post order traversal. We'll come back to in order traversal when we talk about binary search trees, which should be our next topic.